The Policing Advisory Commission of Montgomery County will come to order. I'm Eric Sterling, the chair of the commission. Before we take attendance, I want to welcome the public to our meeting. This evening, in lieu of our usual monthly meeting, the commission is holding its annual public forum as required by the county council in bill 14-19 when it established a commission. Thank you all for attending and for those who've registered to participate. The principal responsibilities of the commission or the PAC or PAC as we often call it, are to advise the county council on policing matters, provide information regarding best practices on policing matters, and recommend policies, programs, legislation, or regulations. Of all the activities of the Montgomery County Police Department, traffic enforcement is probably the activity that affects the largest proportion of the county's population. With about 100,000 traffic stops per year, it is the predominant activity of the personnel of the department and the officers based in the six police districts around the county. Thus, traffic enforcement has been a major subject of the commission's inquiries and research since it was established in 2020. In 2020, we created a committee on discretionary policing, which undertook a review of the goals of the Montgomery County Police Department, the MCPD, and the data that was available to help us understand traffic enforcement in policing in the county. The committee developed a very thoughtful and detailed report, and we formally adopted that report at our meeting in December of 2021. Unfortunately, that report did not get the attention that we thought it deserved. In November 2022, we voted to hold our, poor, our public forum this year on traffic enforcement in order to solicit community testimony and feedback on our report and on the public's experience with traffic enforcement in the county by the Montgomery County Police Department. I want to clarify to the public that the enforcement practices of other police departments that operate in the county, such as those of the municipalities, the Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Police, and the Maryland State Police, are not under the supervision of Montgomery County, that is the County Council and the County Executive, and are not subjects of this evening's forum. After the study, the PAC believes that the traffic enforcement practices in the county do not meet the basic tests of effectiveness, efficiency, and equal enforcement, and that a change in mission, focus, and strategy is necessary. We explain our reasoning in the December 2021 report on traffic enforcement. This evening, the PAC hopes to hear from the people of Montgomery County regarding their experience with traffic enforcement and what changes or improvements they would like to see. In the announcement of the forum, we have invited the public to address issues such as their vision of effective traffic enforcement, racially equitable enforcement, the implications of enforcement against minor offenses, the strategies to improve traffic safety, the impact of traffic reputation on the reputation of the MCPD, the use of automatic enforcement tools such as red light and speed cameras, the dissemination of data about the activities of the MCPD, the handling of formal complaints directed to the MCPD, an annual report by the MCD focused on traffic enforcement, and the use of traffic enforcement as a pretext to initiate investigations of other serious matters. We recognize that the MCPD has in the past year implemented a traffic, a central traffic section for high visibility enforcement of traffic violations. We did not address this in our December 2021 report. And the forum this evening is part of our process of updating our report. Also, since our report, the MCPD audit by the consultant effective law enforcement for all has been finalized with quite a number of findings regarding traffic enforcement. And the PAC will be reviewing these matters in our review 
of our December 2021 report. Let me explain the rules for the forum this evening. Members of the public have been invited to submit written statements or other materials. Those who registered before our cutoff of 4 p.m. this afternoon will have the opportunity to speak for three minutes after they have been recognized by the chair. We will use a timer and we will rule out of order persons who don't stop when told their time has expired and we will turn off their microphone. We will also rule out of order presentations about other police departments or matters that are not related to the subject. Because of the number of participants, we will not be using the chat function of Zoom this evening. If there are members of the commission who wish to speak or ask questions, after a person who has been recognized to speak is finished, then the member of the commission should address the chair to ask to be recognized and they will then be recognized. And then at the conclusion of all the testimony, members of the commission will be invited to, to speak uh, as they wish. With that background on the subject matter and our procedure, I ask the staff to take attendance and then I will recognize our first witness. Uh, Ms. Farage? Hi, actually, Mr. Sterling, you covered everything, and our staff is currently taking attendance, both of the panelists and the attendees, and we will just work in the order of the speakers list, which has provided, been provided to the panelists and has also been provided to the registered speakers. Mm -hmm. One person is asked for a um, slide to be shared, and staff will enable that to happen, and I believe that's for the second speaker on the list. Well, excellent. Very good. Um, and I think we're ready to begin. Um, my understanding is our first speaker is Shante Prier. You are recognized for three minutes. We'll give you an opportunity to um, uh, uh, activate your camera and your microphone. Shante Prier. If Shante Prier is not ready to proceed. Yes, hi. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please go ahead. I'm Welcome. sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> my apologies. I'm at my daughter's ice skating class right now and trying to do this at the same time. Um, my apologies. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Um, yes, so uh, my name is Shante Prier, and I submitted a, a, a bit of my testimony in uh, a bulleted format uh, about a week ago, and um, I'll be brief. I am a 30-year resident of Montgomery County. I attended public schools here. I've worked here. I've lived here for my entire life, and I have seen the character of the community change substantially in 30 years. Um, particularly within the last 10 with respect to traffic enforcement, uh, traffic congestion, and I know this particular hearing is with respect to traffic enforcement, but um, I think there are a number of things that go into traffic enforcement. One of the things that I've witnessed um, in the past 10 or so years is the, the substantial increase in development around Route 29. Um, where I'm most familiar with is East County. That's the traffic pattern that I have become accustomed to or have known most of my, my life. And the density in East County has substantially increased due to increased development. However, I do not think that the county um, I know that there are provisions within the code or, or the council had addressed things with developers creating more housing, that there should be adequate roads, there should be adequate schools. Um, and I just don't think that that's the case. What I have seen is a substantial increase in the population, but not an increase in the things to support that population, such as increased infrastructure or roads, right? Um, we can't necessarily just come through and bulldoze trees and expand Route 29, I get that. However, with this increase in population, what I have not seen is an increase in law enforcement addressing those obstructing uh, the normal flow of traffic on Route 29. On a daily basis, Route 29, the speed limit um, goes anywhere from, I guess, 45 up to 55, depending on where you are exactly on the road. And I routinely, every day, I see people driving 30 miles per hour on Route 29 causing insane 
insane backup, insane traffic backup. So then what then happens is people are zooming around those who are not going with the flow of traffic and, you know, causing dangerous situations. So it could be both those obstructing the flow of traffic by not going with the flow of traffic, people uh, breaking in the middle of the road, not knowing the traffic laws, and um, then those speeding to get around those who, who are not following the traffic laws. So it's an all around mess. And I often see law enforcement want to focus on speeders, speeders and uh, red light. Your time is going to pretty quickly. So, okay, okay. And I often see uh, uh, law enforcement focus on speeders and those who they want to uh, focus on uh, red light enforcement. However, I think there are many other traffic uh, violations that should be looked at by the county and should be assessed, including parking violations. Particularly in my area, there are cars that are parked in no parking areas, blocking the street, obstructing traffic. And that goes on. That went on for two years. We just got law enforcement. Law enforcement just came to start issuing citations this year. So I think there are a number of ways to address the congestion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, does anyone have any questions uh, for Ms. Prier for clarification or to follow up? Ms. Prier, thank you very much for your testimony. Next is Sharif Hidiat. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman Sterling, and thank you committee members for your time. Um, I appreciate you allowing public input, uh, community input on um, these type of issues involving public safety. I'll keep it brief as I know I only have three minutes and I wanna, I wanna, I wanna be respectful for everybody's time. My name is Sharif Hadayat, I'm, I'm a resident of Laytonsville. I've lived in Montgomery County all my life. I've been a police officer. I just retired as a police officer after 23 years on the police department. And the majority of my time was in community relations in the fourth district um, as a community service officer. And I have, so I have some experience and some knowledge about the structure of the police department, the needs of the community, and most importantly, can tell you if a program is meeting the intended goal, such as the speed camera program. And that's, I wanna narrow the focus to that tonight with my testimony. The, the speed camera in its present form is a revenue generating program that has not contributed to the county's vision zero goals. On the contrary, our county executive even said recently stated that we went from 11 pedestrian deaths in 2021 to 42 deaths in 2022. I think that's a little bit unfair to actually even cite that statistic because we were dealing with a pandemic and obviously during the pandemic traffic related statistics are gonna be somewhat skewed, but what we can't ignore is is that even the county's own data, it says county roadway fatalities down compared to 2010. 2021 was the pandemic. You're not gonna have as many people on the road, but if you do take the aggregate of 2010 to 2020 as the graph reflects, this is the county's own statistics, it clearly shows, despite the fact that the speed camera program was implemented in 2009, 10-year aggregate information shows that we're no better now than we were in 2010. So everybody can objectively look and see, look at the, uh, the, the county's own statistics about fatality rates, and it's, it, it's up and down. And we even peaked in 2015, it shows there was a spike. But overall, if you look at this data, it just shows from 2010 to 2020, it's a zero sum gain. And I, my, my concern is, is that we keep selling this as a program that is going to reduce the amount of fatalities on our roadway when the data clearly shows not. The other issues I have with this program is the locations are not transparent. If you go onto the county website, I, I know it's they, they did it with good intent, don't get me wrong. I just feel like the, the, the technology to actually show where these cameras are being placed is not good enough. We if you geolocate where the dots are on the map, they do not actually reflect exactly where these cameras are. It gets the general vicinity, but it really doesn't pinpoint where these cameras are so people can slow down. Also, Susan, real quick, um, do you have a picture of the uh, the uh, sign that I just sent the email with the sign? Can we bring that uh, slide up as well? 
hold on just a minute. I have not checked my email. Oh, I'm sorry. In the meantime, while you're looking for that, um, uh, the list of uh, locations are not updated. And you can fact check me on this. I have worked in District 4. I know on Russet Road in District 4, in the 5200 block of Russet Road, there's a speed camera there. There's a speed camera in, Rock Creek, in front of Rock Creek Valley Elementary School. But our database doesn't Mr. show the, the streets. Okay. Um, you, uh, your time has expired. Do okay. any members of the commission have a question? I see Robin is seeking recognition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my, my question is about this uh, chart. I, I'm afraid I don't really understand how it supports your argument. Maybe I'm just not, must, not understanding it. You, the, the chart appears to show that pretty much every year since 2010, um, there has been, the, uh, there's been a downward tick in uh, fatal crashes. I mean, this is a, this this chart shows the percentage change, I guess, from 2010. But there's still, mostly, like pretty much every data point here shows a decline. Um, mm -hmm. Perhaps, perhaps it would have been easier to just look at the actual numbers that might have made it clearer. Well, the, if you look at 2015, it's above zero percent. If right, but that's at, the if, that, and if, and if you look at 2010 and compare it to 2020, we're at the same level. Do you see what I'm saying? While yeah. we may have taken dips up and down, yes, yeah. you are correct on the data points. Yeah. However, there is no difference between the zero percent in 2010 right, and zero percent right, right, right. in 2020. Okay, I, I understand it now. Thank you. No problem. Uh, thank you, Robin. That was very helpful. Are there other uh, questions for Mr. Hadayat? Hi, this is Chris Tippery from Montgomery County Police Automated Traffic Enforcement. Uh, I understand some of the data that he might be looking at, but actually, uh, as being the director of automated enforcement, in you, you recognize you recognized Christopher. Thank you. Uh, in 2016, uh, for speed enforcement, we issued 522,006 citations. In 2021, because we don't have the data for 2022, we issued 2,000, sorry, 234,142 citations. So since 2016, that's a reduction in 200,000, sorry, 203,673 speed citations. Also in 2016, we issued 71,819 red light citations. Currently in November, we issued 21,852. Again, that's a difference of 58,400, sorry, 484 citations for red light. So as you can see, the program is working as designed. We're issuing less citations every day. And as far as posting the information, the map that he's referring to on the county's website, is kind of an added benefit. State law requires, <clears throat> excuse me, that we post every location in Montgomery County in a general um, paper of general circulation, which it was. It was posted in the Washington Post in April of 2002 as a um, insert. And those locations are also on the website. Thank you very much. Appreciate cool. that. What did um, Mr. Ricks? Mr. Ricks, I, you're seeking recognition. You've... Yes, okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm just wondering what the point of, of this pre presentation was. Uh, if if uh, you're saying that uh, traffic enforcement is gener revenue generating only uh, and uh, we know that, I mean, you were in District 4, and District 4 is around the Wheaton area and all of that, and uh, there had been several uh, incidents uh, in that area. So uh, I'm just wondering, uh, and, and I know that they have, uh, that they came up uh, early on with the uh, program called Cardus, Speed Cardus. And uh, like Georgia Avenue and in Silver Spring and those areas and some areas, uh, other places in the county. So can you help me just to understand what it is that are you saying? Do, 
that you don't want revenue generating or the speed cameras are not effective or what is the point? Mr. Ricks, thank, thank you very much. Mr. Hedaya, let me give you another minute then to clarify your presentation, if that's okay. Sure. The, the correlation is, is I don't believe that the speed has any direct correlation with the reduction of fatal accidents in Montgomery County. That's, that's my, my point about this whole thing. Y the biggest reason why we have traffic accidents in Montgomery County and in anywhere for that matter is distracted driving. Speed might be a contributing factor. Yes, I'll agree with that because it reduces reaction time. But the main reason why people are getting into accidents are be either because they're under the influence, they haven't followed the right of uh, way laws, they haven't yielded to the oncoming traffic, they're distracted driver, and in the end, they've taken their eyes off the road. It's not, the primary reason is not because of speed. That's the point I'm making. And I think that there's the data points on the present, the, the slide that I showed, which was county issued, shows exactly what I'm saying. There is no direct correlation between speed cameras and the reduction of fatal accidents in Montgomery County. Thank you, Mr. Hedayat. Uh, Commissioner Daphnis. I would just note <clears throat> that NHTSA data does show that speed reduction does reduce fatalities. I think the more appropriate data to look at here might be the overall crashes, not just the fatal crashes. Thank you. Thank you. Robin, were you seeking recognition again? Yes, just uh, very briefly, uh, I wondered if uh, Mr. Tiffery could share the traffic data uh, over the years uh, since the traffic, uh, whether, whether you could share the automated um, uh, traffic data you just referenced for all of the years since 2016 or whenever it was introduced. <laughs> Dr. Gaster, I think what we'll do is we will ask the police department, you know, some specific questions for follow up. Obviously, there'll be a, a number of issues. Okay. We'll, we will, if you make a note of them, yeah. um, we'll, we'll submit them. That, we appreciate his bringing that to us at this time. Um, uh, Commissioner Delane. Yes, thank you. Um, I would like to, the picture that you, um, did not get to speak on. Um, we did see it, but I wanted to know how that ties into um, your stance right now so that I can have a full picture of where you are, what you're trying to present to us. Sure, that when you drive around the county, whether it be um, uh, overgrowth of street signs or um, on Norbeck Road, for example, it took somebody who was in the nonprofit world to convince the county that they needed to move a sign that was directly like, completely obscuring the speed warning sign for the speed limit by another sign that we need to have more due diligence on when we decide where we're not, when I say we, uh, when the county decides or the state decides to put up a sign to ensure that the maintenance of that sign is clear to the motorist that there is a speed enforcement a camera on that road, or if you're going to put photo enforced, at least let it be legible so that people Got can it. have a fighting chance. Good, 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 good point. I think all of us have seen it, our, our our favorite sign problem uh, at different places obscured by uh, by one thing or another. Mm -hmm. um, um, thank you very much. A, 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 a helpful discussion, uh, and uh, Mr. Hedaya, thank you so much for your, your testimony. Um, our next panelist is Mo Gabari. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. You're recognized okay. for three minutes. Thank you. Uh, first, um, I thank Chairman Sterling and uh, the members of the PAC Community Forum on Traffic Enforcement for allowing me to testify. Um, I'm not trying to launch a complaint about my case, rather to inform the PAC of discrimination against and harassment of our seniors. Um, uh, I, uh, the, the, uh, my concern are twofold. One, that MVA, Motor Vehicle Administration, has a um, 
program called uh, uh, Driver Awareness Safety, and which allows basically gives officers discretionary power to make make life miserable for drivers, especially senior citizens. And the, the, the police officers just use whatever they, however they feel it fit. Um, I was stopped on December, uh, in December of 2018, um, uh, an officer who uh, didn't give me his name um, or his reason for stopping me um, on Busick Avenue uh, near Rockwell Pike. Uh, and he, after 20 minutes of sitting in his car and waiting, he came back with a citation and a uh, citation stating failure yield right away on left turn. Now, there was no accident, of course. And uh, then he, and a citation. Uh, and this, and then a page, about one foot page of printed writing in small letters that one cannot even read uh, uh, that fast. I mean, it took me several minutes to read it when I got home. Anyway, then I received a package from MVA, which contained five, uh, five pages for myself to fill in, and four pages for my doctor to fill in, and one page for my optometrist. Now, with lots of medical questions, questions that are just basically private between patient and, and, and doctor or, or healthcare provider. This, the, then he, he the, the officer actually, excuse me, lied, lied to justify his referring me to this program. He wrote something like, uh, I didn't yield for traffic because they had to slam their brakes, which was not true. And he also, lied about pedestrian. Mr. Gahari, your time is up. Thank you for your testimony and your, and your point. Are there any questions for Mr. Gahari? Mr. Gahari, thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, our next witness is, if I see correctly, um, uh, Mr. Robert Viega on behalf of the Silver Spring Justice Coalition. Uh, yes, can you, can you hear me? Yes, we can. You're okay, recognized you. for three minutes. All right, thank you, commissioners. My name is Robert Vega. I'm the co-chair of the Silver Spring Justice Coalition. We are a coalition of individuals, organizations from throughout the county committed to reducing harm caused by police and empowering those communities that most affected by policing. As reports issued by the Office of Legislative Oversight in this PAC reveals traffic stops in this county reflect significant and consistent racial disparities with stops of Blacks and Latinx people, more than three times the rate of traffic stops of white people. Also, uh, these traffic stops lead to searches and arrests that are significantly higher for people of color. To address these disparities and limit unnecessary and often pretextual interactions between armed police and motorists of the county, the coalition supports a county law to limit the types of traffic stops that officers can make, reserving only stops for driving that causes dangers to the community. Such laws have been adopted by the state of Virginia, city of Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, and other jurisdictions without harming public safety. In addition, we urge your support for a prohibition against traffic stops resulting in car searches uh, solely on the odor of marijuana. Given that the medicinal and recreational use of, mar of marijuana is pretty much uh, uh, legalized throughout the state and that uh, these infringements are also um, uh, against our Fourth Amendment rights. Lastly, I want to say, um, while gun violence is real, the data does not support that traffic stops and car searches are a necessary tool 
to combat this problem. Your own report revealed that a recent three year period, less than 5% of all guns seized by the county, Montgomery County Police were seized during a traffic stop. An average of about 2,200 stops to find a single gun. This cannot be the basis to continue a practice of enforcement that, though, that so disparately impacts our black and brown community members. These are uh, uh, issues I bring above are easy fixes uh, for the county and will bring equity to the county. And we propose that you encourage legislative changes to the council uh, to uh, eliminate these racist practices and policing in our county and uh, promote equity. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Vega. Are there questions for Mr. Vega? Well, Mr. Vega, thank you very much. Very much appreciate uh, your concise and uh, well-structured testimony. Thank you. Our next witness is Thomas Dedone, a uh, former commander, I think, for traffic with the Montgomery County Police Department. We're delighted that Commander Dedone is uh, sought to be a witness uh, this evening. Hello, Mr. Sterling. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. You're Very recognized good. for three Thank minutes. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I more or less saw that traffic was uh, being discussed. So seeing a lot of familiar faces with Vernon and Christy and uh, representatives of law enforcement. I just wanted to uh, thank you for, you know, all the efforts. Um, I read your report. Of course, you know, I would disagree with the findings of the PAC, um, but um, we know that um, Captain Dillman and Mr. Tipperary are running the um, traffic division and they're here and they, they do care. Uh, they carried the same uh, high values that Chief Jones has had bestowed on me. And uh, we do care about um, traffic safety as well as uh, the concerns of our community. So I know that they will continue to work forward. If you have any question about the data uh, regarding the report that was done by OLO, uh, Captain Satinsky, who's on here, is our data expert. He did drill down into the different aspects of the data. Uh, Mr. Sharif showed data, but I don't think his data was right on point. You can make data say anything that you want. Um, I think it's important to show where the cameras were, as Ms. Daphne pointed out, we have shown reductions in crashes. Uh, we have data that shows that. You can't take overarching countywide data and apply it to an individual program because we don't have ca cameras on every road. That's an apples to oranges comparison. It just doesn't work. But uh, rest assured, uh, Montgomery County uh, Police Department does care. We are not a discriminatory um, agency, and we but we will work with the community in their perspective and try to improve um, our performance every day. And finally, I'd like to say thank you, Mr. Ricks, who was one of the founding members of the speed camera program, his efforts uh, helped us build the program to the, pro the qualities that uh, we do currently deploy today. Commander Dedone, thank you so much for your testimony. Are there members who would like to be recognized? I see Mr. Ricks and then uh, Ms. Daphnis. Uh, thank you and thank you, Tom. Uh, good to hear you still involved. Uh, we had, uh, you know, in, in, in early years even, I know that there was a lot of uh, studies done to, uh, for corridors and where we needed to place cameras and all of that. Can you just very briefly talk about that? Yes, very, very simply. The, when we built this program, we work with AAA, we work with a citizens advisory group because we wanted to build a program that would be supported by the community. And what we decided is this one would have to be a data-driven program. So before a camera is placed on any roadway, a series of criteria 
that was established by the Citizens Advisory Committee must be looked at and addressed, which includes factors not only on speed limits and roadway, but crashes, pedestrian related factors. Um, and you know, the purpose of this was to be able to defend the placement of every camera. Um, and to this day, uh, Mr. Tippery maintains it, this, this criteria is on our website. And uh, Mr. Tippery does continue um, to uphold that, um, that, that program and those, dis, those policy decisions because we want to be able to defend why we place them. There are some other jurisdictions around um, the metro area that do not have integrity in their program, but we wanted to make sure by using the citizen advisory information from AAA and research we had from programs that were successful and failed, that we wanted to build a program model program for the nation. And I believe our program still is a model program in the nation. Thank you, Commander. Commissioner Daphnis. Hi, uh, hi, Captain Didone or Commander Didone. It's good to see you or hear you. Um, just uh, if you could give like a 30 second view, all of the data, like the, the OLO data and stuff aside, what is your like 30 second view on just expansion of speed camera programs in general, assuming that the same, um, you know, integrity is upheld with the criteria? The, I, I, believe, I believe we have proven that if we use this same um, data set and these still criteria, that I think we could be more effective if we deployed our cameras now in the 40, 45 mile an hour speed limit, staying on arterial roadways. We know that the higher the speeds, the higher likely of a pedestrian or a vulnerable user fatality, including bicycles. I kind of, we knew we had to prove that we had a program with integrity. So we wanted to maintain that program with the 35 minute mile an hour speed limit we were pioneered with uh, when we started the program. But I think if we want to be able to change behavior on our arterial roadways to increase our effectiveness on um, vulnerable user crashes and other high speed crashes that could lead to fatal crashes, then expanding this program in our residential, in our residential arterial roadways on road speeds of 40 and 45, as long as we maintain this criteria for data driven approach would be a good thing for the county's benefit in the long run. Commissioner Daphnis, was, was that uh, adequate? Did, are you, yep, did you want to follow? Uh, I, I think that covers that. I guess maybe just one quick additional question. Uh, there is a, a proposal, or there will be a proposal by some to reduce the speed limit for where cameras can be allowed. Mm -hmm. And any thoughts on that? Well, um, you know, Montgomery County is the only county in the state who is authorized to place cameras outside of school zones. And I would think that you would, um, we have demonstrated that these cameras had effect. And I think if we start minimizing the locations that we can put these cameras, we start minimizing the effect of these cameras. Um, although we have, we have the authorization to expand the number of cameras we put on the roadways, Mr. Tipper and Captain Dillman have been very respectful and try to limit the growth of the program so the community doesn't feel like they're overwhelmed. So with that being said is, I would look towards being able to use this tool um, in more places rather than less. Thank you very much. Uh, Commissioner Gaster. My question uh, uh, actually was mostly asked by um, uh, Ms. Daphnis, but um, I, I guess I would probe a little bit harder. Um, we recommended in our report that you expand the program uh, significantly. And I guess uh, if you have authorization, um, what's holding you back? Well, one of the, the biggest issues, and, and I'll let um, Mr. Tipri, since he is more actively involved in it, but one of the largest issues 
is most of the locations that we go to install these cameras, we have to do our studies, but they're on state roadways. And state highway has this very long drug out process that includes engineering designs and evaluations. And so um, to get a approval for a permit to place these cameras, working with the state can take six months or a year. I remember just trying to get the camera on Route 355 near Pooks Hill Road where citizens and council members were really wearing me out about getting this, fighting the state. And, and it wasn't until I said, okay, I give up, help. And you know we finally got the permit approved. So there's a little bit of politics involved. Um, and then we have to make sure that we put the cameras where the data shows they're needed. Because once we put them there, there, there's a big competition for the cameras. Everybody wants them in their neighborhood, but nobody wants to drive by them. So we promised the community with Mr. Ricks being on the committee that we would only put them in places where the data showed they were necessary. So um, although we will expand the program, and I know Chris and Brian will, um, they're trying to do it in a measured approach. So um, we do it responsibly because you can't put the genie back in the bottle once you put it out. And once you start putting it in places where it's not defensible, then it becomes everybody wants one and then we can't defend it because where traditional enforcement fails is police officers can't go out and work the roadway effectively enough times to change behaviors. These cameras do, but we, we have to be very careful about how we place them because once we place them, we have to solve the problem before we move, move it out of the program. There's very been very few roadways that have been declared victories, but in the bottom half of Connecticut Avenue from Kensington to 495, I know for 20 years, Bethesda traffic tries to slow down speed, speeding on that roadway and never succeeded. They could go there any day and write 10, 15, 20 tickets. Now with the speed cameras there, moving them around, um, it works. And we have, we have made that a safer stretch of the road. And we have segments of that on Montgomery Village Avenue and different parts of the county where the cameras have worked. So um, we want to continue that Th program. Thank you. Let, let, me recognize, let me recognize Vice Chair McKinney for a question or comment. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Although most of my questions have already been answered, I was just curious as to how often is the data that's collected evaluated and does anyone know specifically on average uh, the speed that may make you determine whether or not a, a camber needs to stay in place or be moved to another location. Is that question perhaps directed to Mr. Tipri or to Captain That's to directed to Mr. Dedone or any other the, of the uh, police officers or captains or whomever is on, online right now that can answer it. In Montgomery County, we have um, an analyst that's assigned to the speed camera program from the vendor. And um, Mr. Tippery, at his discretion, can pull speed data. I did speed data on an annual basis when I was running the program and looked at the effectiveness of the cameras uh, and, and compared to see if we were making it. Because back then, we had a limited number of them. And if, if they were no longer needed, although we rotate them um, every few weeks, every month, generally, if we could then move them to a different location, we tried to use that data. But annually, I tried to do some kind of overarching analysis. Um, but when COVID hit, um, all the resources and all the planning kind of kind of changed. So I don't know what Mr. Tipri has inherited, um, but um, that data um, can be analyzed. Um, when it is pulled and evaluate the camera's effectiveness. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Commissioner Ricks. 
Uh, yes, sir. Very quickly, uh, I just wanted to make the point that when we were looking at where to place cameras, uh, I call them the munchkins because uh, wherever you put them, they would gobble you up. Uh, and and we wanted to make sure that we did not put them only in certain uh, ethnic neighborhoods. Uh, and that uh, because they don't recognize black, white, or purple, uh, all they know is that the car went past them 11 miles over the speed limit. And uh, so that was one of the criteria that uh, you know, I was looked at in, in when we replaced uh, the, the uh, cameras. Thank you, Mr. Ricks. Um, if there are no further questions for Commander Dodone, and we're very grateful for your for taking the time this evening to to join us and and provide your your comments and to respond to our questions. I'd like to recognize now uh, um, Stephen Besner for three minutes. Mr. Besner, are you ready? So now I'm unmuted. Yes, thank you. You're recognized for three minutes. Go ahead, please. Okay, so my first comment goes to crosswalk signals. I live off the Tuckerman Station where there's a crosswalk signal that's had several bad accidents. One recently was fatal. And my comment is the, the yellow lights blink, then the yellow lights go solid, then they go red. And that process takes so long that by the time that the people have already crossed the street, the cars are sitting, there's nobody there anymore. So maybe you should look at that. Uh, my other comment is, another comment is, uh, I know we have a right turn on red permitted all over the place, but nobody stops. All the cars just turn. And that's a serious issue. And as I'm driving along, people just cut right in front of me. So I don't know whether that's an education thing or what. And also stop signs are the same way. They're treating stop signs like yield signs all the time. There's no good, no good. In, I don't know, I don't see police enforcing any of that. And when, he, and when I first moved here 20 some, 30 years ago, I remember seeing a sign on I-95 that you prosecute tailgaters, but I see people tailgating all the time, even police cars tailgate, and nobody does any prosecutions. That's my story, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Besner. Any questions for Mr. Besner? Well, those were helpful observations, Mr. Besner. Thank you. Um, Mr. David Martone, you're recognized. Hi, thank you for letting me speak today. Uh, this is David Martone. I turned 63 today. Happy birthday. My birthday. Thank you very much. Um, I'm a 15 year resident of Montgomery County. I've lived uh, the entire time right in the Forest Glen, Forest Estates area, uh, right by Holy Cross. And so my perspective is Georgia Avenue, University Boulevard and um, intersection of Forest Glen with, uh, with Georgia, uh, with Georgia Avenue. Uh, my humble opinion is that the county and the police, they do a good job of policing, of lowering the speed limits, of improving uh, road markings and signage. Um, but I do disagree with the point that's been made earlier that officers can't change behavior by intermittent policing. I think intermittent policing is very effective because my, my observations are that people will run across the roadway. Uh, I've never seen anyone ticketed, but I have seen people struck running across the roadway. Um, and this is where there's no uh, crossing. They're, they're running to possibly where the bus stop is. And again, there's no crossing anywhere near where they're running across the street. It's usually when it's dark or early in the morning when I observed this. Um, and also uh, during the school time uh, where the school buses are out about in the neighborhood, I witnessed this regularly. I've talked to the third district many times and they're unable to provide an officer intermittently to do this, that 
a car will race up Forest Glen in the opposite uh, in the opposite lane. This happens time and time and time again. Seven thirty, eight o'clock in the morning. Um, that uh, people will race in their car right up the oncoming lane, um, and this is at a time where the, there's kids getting ready for school. The school buses are out and about. Um, I'd like to see more intermittent uh, enforcement of these kinds of behaviors. I think that will change behaviors. I, I also believe that the speed cameras, the red light cameras change behaviors, but I think it's a combination of all the above. And um, I do see people ticketed for speeding, but I don't see these kinds of behaviors, the running across the roadway or speeding into oncoming lane, particularly on Forest Glen, it's gonna take a fatality for somebody to come out and police that. I did see a couple times uh, over the years, you know, an officer comes out. Okay, I'm done. Thank you very much. Are there any questions for Mr. Martone? Commissioner Daphnis. I just wanted to clarify that if a person is crossing the road at an intersection. It is considered to be a crosswalk. So I just wanted to make that clarification, although I understand your point about um, some of the pedestrian behaviors as well as driver behaviors. Well, may, may I say that it's not, not at an intersection, not at an intersection. They're running across the road, uh, you know, across all, all lanes of Georgia Avenue where it is not marked. And there might be a bus stop marked near there. They may be going diagonally or straight across, but it's where there are no markings. That's where I see the behaviors and I've never seen anybody ticketed for that. It's quite dangerous. I've seen, again, my son and I going to school actually witnessed a person being struck and severely injured mm. um, for that behavior. Thank you, Mr. Martone. And thank you, Commissioner Daphnis. If there are no further questions for Mr. Martone, our next witness is uh, Michael Mendelson. Hello, can you hear me? We can, Mr. Mendelson. You're recognized for three minutes. Well, thank you. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to contribute to the forum. I'll read from a script to squeeze in as much as possible. I hope you understand. The most glaring traffic hazards to me are those threatening pedestrians and bicycle riders due to a combination of aggressive and incompetent driving, deteriorated roads, too few truly safe bike lanes, and the subject of my testimony, poor enforcement. Attempting to cross intersections is a terrifying experience. I estimate that in about one third of my attempts when I have a walk sign, I am nearly struck by a vehicle because drivers are too hurried, blinded by the bulk of their SUVs, ignorant or too hostile to yield the right of way. I'd like to share two anecdotes with potential relevance to enforcement. Number one, approximately eight years ago, I was struck broadside by the driver of a large SUV as she pulled out of a side street. The impact on my lower leg was strong enough to bend the wheel of my bike and knock me onto the street. I called 911 from the Walter Reed ER and asked if I would be able to make an accident report later in the day. The 911 dispatcher said that would be fine. So after my follow-up call to the police that evening, two officers arrived at my home. After I described the event, they refused to file a report because they claimed the quote state unquote already had too many reports in their files. So this wouldn't help anything. I say you need to take the safety of pedestrians and bike riders more seriously and not just state the fact, even if you find it boring and unproductive. I had the driver's information. Perhaps she already had multiple at-fault accidents and violations under her belt, and my report would have gotten her off the road. Number two, approximately three weeks ago, in daylight, I attempted to walk at a brightly marked pedestrian crossing at Congressional Lane in Rockville which is not at an intersection. I pressed the crossing button, which immediately started amber lights flashing at oncoming drivers. When I had stepped about four feet into the street, I heard the roar of an engine to my left and saw that a driver was accelerating to beat me before I reached the path of travel. 
he had his cell phone raised to quickly snap a photo or video of his intended victim as he raced past. Before I could resume crossing, another driver in an adjacent driveway to my left angrily blasted his horn at me because I wasn't walking quickly enough after being nearly run down. And the following day, another driver failed to stop at the same crossing and nearly hit me. I would bet that these drivers always operate in an aggressive and dangerous manner. With adequate enforcement, they might have had accumulated enough violations to be yanked off the road. I used to see cars stopped by the police with noticeable frequency, but not now. I would say I need to drive many hours before I see a single Montgomery County traffic stop, yet moving violations are obvious to my untrained but experienced eyes every 10 seconds on any busy street in this county. You need to stop and ticket more drivers. Frankly, you need to ticket the hell out of this county. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Mendelson. Thank you very much. Are there questions for Mr. Mendelson? I don't know if there. I, I'm sorry, I, I did. I, Mr. I, Ricks is recognized. Yeah, just one quick question. Uh, what is uh, his uh, opinion of what has been happening on Old Georgetown Road uh, with the bike, uh, uh, you know, lanes being changed and all that? Well, being a native New Yorker, I'm afraid I have to be blunt. I believe it's a token. We have so many miles of roads in this county and uh, having high visibility safety projects in certain areas uh, doesn't have enough impact on safety. Perhaps these areas uh, were selected for their elegant bike lanes because they're uh, noticeably more hazardous than our other roads. Uh, I don't uh, follow the, the traffic planning of the county. I'm not an expert on that. But if they could have more of those, that would certainly be wonderful. Uh, thank, thank you, you Mr. Asking. Rick. Thank you, Mr. Mendelson. Are, are any further questions or comments for Mr. Mendelson? If, if I may just make one observation. Um, when I, uh, earlier this fall, uh, a neighbor of mine was struck walking her dog crossing East West Highway. And then on December 1st, uh, the husband of a friend of mine was struck uh, crossing the street at Western Avenue. Uh, I was taken aback that um, in this very short period of time, two people that I knew uh, were uh, struck and injured uh, by motor vehicles. Um, uh, it may just be coincidental, but it certainly strikes me that um, th that I was not aware in, in, in many, many years in the county of, of anybody that I know being struck by a vehicle. Um, so I can really empathize with what you're saying, Mr. Mendelson. Thank you very much, Mr. Sterling. Um, our next witness is uh, Mr. Lawrence Bricker. I thank you uh, for the opportunity for me to speak. You can hear me okay? We can hear you fine. You're recognized okay. for three minutes, Mr. Bricker. Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, my concern is about uh, speed cameras, but first I want to uh, thank uh, the fact that uh, the area on uh, Randolph Road uh, between New Hampshire Avenue and like Kent Mill Road has recently gotten uh, new traffic lights and cross uh, walk markings and I, I appreciate all that. Um, but the number of uh, accidents I'm thinking specifically at Randolph Road and Loxley Lane um, has definitely increased. In fact, at seven o'clock this evening, while on this meeting, I got an alert on the computer that there was just another accident in the same area. Um, so uh, what I just wanted to uh, suggest is that whatever preliminary data has to be collected, um, uh, maybe it can be collected to, to justify uh, an additional uh, traffic light at Randolph Road and Sherwood Forest Road. Um, and in addition to the new uh, traffic light with a turn signal and everything at Randolph Road and Loxley Lane, I wonder if on 
you know, both the eastbound and westbound uh, lanes of Randolph Road. There could also be speed cameras because what's happening now is when the traffic lights turn yellow, instead of drivers putting their foot on the brake, anticipating the red, they're putting their foot on the gas pedal um, and actually speeding up. So uh, I think if they speed up and uh, go through the red light, uh, I, I, I would not feel guilty if those drivers received a violation for jumping the light as well as uh, speeding and the camera after the traffic light would uh, would pick that, pick that up. Um, so again, I appreciate all, uh, I've lived in the county a long time. I appreciate all that the police department does to ensure traffic safety and just make these, um, these suggestions for additional safety measures. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bricker, for your specific suggestions. Um, Commissioner Daphnis. Hi, um, I just wanted to suggest to uh, Mr. Bricker that he submit a request to the Montgomery County Department of Transportation for installation of the traffic signals because the police deal with the speed cameras, but the County Department of Transportation deals with the actual um, traffic signals. So I just want to make sure that you get your request to the right place. Good, thanks for that suggestion. I appreciate it. I'll follow up. Thank you, that's very helpful. Mr. Ricks. Yeah, very quickly, though, uh, don't be disappointed if it doesn't happen because it takes 20 million years. Look, Absolutely. And, and trillions of people getting hit and killed before they do anything about it. So, yes, I, I realize that uh, I used to be a, a, a teacher in Burtonsville and we had students getting hit crossing Route 29. And I'd say it took over 15 years before we got it. Finally, the state put in a traffic light. So um, I appreciate all your efforts. Thank you. Slightly quicker on those county roads, though. And Randolph Road is a county, a county road. So yeah. Randolph Road, I hear the racing on Randolph Road all night long. I mean, two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning. I mean, it, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, there have been so many accidents that it's, you're, I don't have any numbers, but your records will will verify uh, the number of recent accidents that have been at Loxley Lane and Randolph Road uh, or you, at Hawkesbury and, and, and Randolph Road. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bricker. Thank the commissioners for the clarifications. If there are no further questions for Mr. Bricker, our next witness is Sean Atkins. Sean Atkins. Mr. Atkins joins us later. Let's hear now from Nancy Russ. Nancy Russ. Uh, we'll go next to Miguel Vargas. Miguel Vargas. Is Mr. Raymond Lombardo with us? Mr. Lombardo, I see you have appeared. Yes. Hello. Can you hear me okay? We can hear you. You're recognized for three minutes, Mr. Lombardo. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, as uh, My name is Ray Lombardo. Uh, we lived in the Colesville area of Silver Spring for about 20 years. I wanted to speak tonight just to share my experiences, which is that in the last couple of years, it seems like to some degree traffic problems with reckless driving and other irresponsible behavior have just become very widespread. And it's um, terrible hearing some of the stories tonight. I'm not that surprised. Just to note, I, I haven't had, thankfully, that many interactions with the police, but my, my experience has been Montgomery County Police are very professional. And as a citizen, I feel like the camera program has been implemented in a way, I mean, nothing is perfect, but I, I do genuinely feel that they're trying to improve safety and not just pick your pocket. They publish where they are, they put them near schools, the, the speed limits are set reasonably and they give you a buffer. So I, I have no problem with an all of the above approach. Um, 
I do want to urge that I think groups like this are incredibly important and it's really interesting and helpful to hear views, even ones you don't agree with in a forum like this. But I do want to urge that it's absolutely necessary for our county police to be engaged and heard in this process. Everything I've read in the local news, Washington Post, WTOP, is that we're having recruiting problems for our police, that we are understaffed our police, um, and that you know crime in general has gone up. I know that's outside the scope of this, but certainly traffic fatalities have gone up. Just a couple of quick stories for those of you who live in the area. Most of them are from this fall. One morning I was driving my kids to school. I live near Randolph Road. On East Randolph, I drive out of Serpentine. I see a column of smoke down near the park. Someone got into a bad accident. They were dead. Horrible. Then on Randolph Road, where the other gentleman was noting, there was an accident within the hour, another person dead. Last year on 29, I think it was summer or spring, I was bringing our dog to dog training in downtown Silver Spring, a young man riding one of those racing motorcycles. Again, I'm not judging anybody. We've all done stupid things in our lives. Speeding, went over the handlebars, he's dead. You drive by, he's under a sheet. Um, and I know that this, is, this committee doesn't have a jurisdiction over the ICC, but a motorcyclist slammed into a Montgomery County cruiser and killed themselves. I mean, it's just out of control, which is why, not to belabor the point, it's incredibly important that this work be done in conjunction with the police and so that they are not overly hindered. That being said, I understand and respect the views of the gentleman from the, the SSJC. I think that people like him, they need to be engaged, their views need to be heard, and we need to figure out how we can do better to address those concerns because I never assume anybody is wrong or crazy. We all bring valid perspectives to this. And as a community, we wanna do the best we can. Um, so in any event, that's really all I wanted to say. I thank all of the commissioners. I know you're probably all volunteers spending time to do this to help make our community better. So thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it and have a good evening. Thank you very much, Mr. Lombardo, for uh, your very balanced and thoughtful observations. Are there questions or comments for Mr. Lombardo? No, I, I don't see any questions. Um, our next witness is uh, Art Butler. Did you miss Steve Cohen? I believe Mr. Cohen has uh, left the uh, webinar. Mr. Art Butler. Next in our list is Harold Hill. Mr. Hill, I see you. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, You're recognized for three minutes, Mr. Hill. Yes, uh, I'm going to make mine as brief as possible. Um, I want to give honor to each and every last one of you commissioners for being on board. Thank you. Um, I'm, like I said, my name is Harold Hill. I canvass the area of, of uh, East County, and um, I work with uh, uh, two organizations, um, Everyday Canvassing, as well as uh, Impact Silver Spring. And I do community community engagement uh, to speak with the uh, community, uh, uh, the neighbors, as well as the businesses in uh, East County. Um, there is a very uh, uh, it's not enough policing in uh, the uh, Bridge Cheney area of the businesses. Uh, the uh, uh, it's it's rarely that you do see polices there, and they have a high crime, a high uh, snatch and grab, um, robbery uh, 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 going on in that in that East County uh, in, in East County district, um, especially around school hours. Um, uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I know that uh, uh, the uh, police is, 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 the staff is very, is very low and things of that nature. But however, um, my point is, is that if you need more data out of the community, we might can be of assistance to you all if uh, you uh, want, if you want to uh, 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 get more data from uh, your community, from the uh, neighbors in uh, East County District. Thank you. 
Well, thank you, Mr. Hill. I'm very generous to offer that your resources that way. Are there questions for Mr. Hill? Questions or comments for Mr. Hill? Uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Ricks? Mr. Ricks? The directly. only thing that I would add is that uh, East Silver Spring and uh, Downtown Silver Spring is a real challenge for the police department. Uh, in fact, uh, that's one of the high uh, areas of, it, of uh, need for police and all. In fact, I think the county executive has recently even spoken about uh, um, putting in another police district seven, police district seven. Uh, so uh, we realize, at least I do, that uh, there's there's a lot to be done in that East Silver Spring area, and I know that the county has other uh, focus. Uh, in um, in in that area and housing and the college and all that stuff. So hopefully, uh, some of that will turn around in in time. Thank you, Mr. Ricks. Um, I had been calling on an Art Butler, but I may have had the name transcribed improperly. Is, is Mr. Art Brodsky? Did did you sign up to speak? No, sir, I did not. That's why I was curious why you wanted to unmute me. I'm just here to listen. We were, thank you, Mr. Brodsky. We were, we had called under Mr. Art Butler. He hadn't responded. We weren't sure if uh, uh, we had, it was a mistake at our end. Thank you. Um, um, Benjamin Slade is also on our list to, uh, as a re to request to speak. Mr. Slade, you're recognized. Uh, can you hear me? We can hear you, you're recognized for three minutes. Thank you very much. Um, let me just get my script up here. So my question is uh, about the, well, question or statement, it's about the issue of aggressive driving. Uh, my personal experience is I see aggressive driving all the time. I live in Kensington, Maryland. Uh, and you know, it seems like since the pandemic, there's less police around. Maybe that's just my personal experience. Um, but there's never a policeman around when I see this. And it's, you know, it's maddening to see somebody weaving in and out of traffic. So my suggestion is, and this might be a little contentious, instead of stationary speed cameras, can you have roving police, uh, speed cameras? Have somebody with a dash cam and they run, you know, does not be a full policeman, somebody with a meter attendant type grade, and they drive around and when they see somebody doing something crazy, they hit the button, record it, maybe make an audio statement where it was, what they were doing, make sure they could see the driver's license, and then report that video, have it submitted, I think, for certain uh, red light cameras, they have it reviewed before they submit a ticket, have it reviewed, and give automated tickets from roving cars with a dash cam. Um, so that would, you know, get the, the issue then is you, you you don't have to have very expensive policemen, fully qualified policemen who can arrest somebody, but lower cost employees just driving around giving tickets. Now, obviously, that doesn't smell good. It smells like a, aggressive policing, and you get a ticket without without being seen. But it's you just don't have enough police around to try and stop people from driving aggressively. Uh, I'm proposing this as only for aggressive driving, only for egregious instances where somebody does something that's clearly dangerous. Uh, and that's, you know, it'd be like a ticket by mail, same as a red light camera. And that is my suggestion. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Slade, for that suggestion. Are there questions or comments from Mr. Slade? We had asked earlier if uh, Sean Adkins, Nancy Russ, Miguel Vargas uh, were uh, present. Uh, they had signed up to speak. Art Butler. Those are our, uh, we've heard now from uh, everyone who had signed up um, so I'm now going to uh, open the floor to members of the commission for their uh, observations, 
uh, and comments regarding the evening. I see that Chief Jones has joined us. If uh, I'm happy to recognize Chief Jones if he wanted to make any comments as well. Chief Jones? I yes, see good, after, good evening. Can you hear me? Is it chair? We can hear you. Go ahead, Chief. Okay, okay. good evening. Um, I do I appreciate the PAC allowing me to speak just for a few minutes. Um, and I've heard much of the discussion, many of the um, issues that many of the citizens have raised around traffic enforcement. Um, some interesting uh, conversation. And I think we all take this to heart. I think uh, similarly to um, uh, retired Assistant Chief uh, Tom Dodone, his statements that he made, who, as we all know, has been a very big advocate for traffic enforcement and traffic safety. I mean, that's one of the things that I really wanted to, to make sure that um, those that are listening in tonight that, that understand that um, much of what we have focused on um, over the past couple of years in our traffic division with the new centralized traffic unit has been the focus on data uh, driven enforcement on our major arterial roadways. Um, that also we are in the expansion of our speed camera program, as I know that many uh, on the commission are aware of, of. But I also wanted to note that as we look at these, uh, these issues that uh, we are suffering uh, significant uh, decreases in our overall uh, numbers of police officers. We're about 125 officers down. Um, below our complemented uh, numbers, which is unprecedented for our department over the past few years. Um, we are working on some additional strategies. Um, and as we look at, you know, the many issues that we center around, particularly pedestrian safety, um, bicycle safety, um, as well as um, our, our, our vehicles on our roadways. Um, you know, I know it was noted earlier about some of the statistics around the pandemic. Um, and as we noticed that even during the pandemic, when there were not as many vehicles on our roadways, what we also realized was the fact that we had significant increases in complaints about uh, speeding, drag racing, um, all throughout the county um, that also, uh, um, that impacted uh, many of our collisions as well as um, impacted our fatal crashes along the way. Um, and so as you know, we have these conversations about traffic safety um, and we wanna make sure people understand that there are more than just the one simple cause as to why there are crashes. Um, there are causes such as their speed is, is the number one cause. I know, um, I think uh, Sharif Hadiat had noted some information that I think was a little bit uh, misdirected, but uh, but I, I know where he was going, but I will tell you that speed is really the number one issue that we see when it comes to many of our traffic collisions. Um, the inability to avoid a collision, um, and that is, again, by driving too fast for the conditions. We also know that there's all, also other, uh, the fail to yield a right of way on many uh, turns, um, and again, we know that distracted driving is still a major issue, as well as uh, DUIs. We had a large increase of uh, DUIs during the holiday season. Um, and in fact, um, during that holiday season, we had five police cruisers st struck while officers were out doing um, enforcement efforts in the county to keep DUIs off of our roadways. So our officers are really challenged in that regard. Um, and again, with the lack of officers that uh, uh, we're a reduction of officers now sometimes warrant our, um, though we may have a desire to go out and do traffic safety, there are times when we have to, again, our first and priority is to, to be there to answer our calls for service um, as directed for each district um, and to be there to respond to 911 and non-emergency calls along the way. And those will also um, include uh, traffic issues that, that are centered in our, our particular communities. So, um, so again, I, I appreciate everyone's efforts. We again wanna work with this commission. Um, I will tell you that again, uh, we have again, more fatals in this county than we have homicides. 
Um, and traffic safety is something that, again, we're not a one um, um, type of community. For example, we're not just all urban. Um, we're a combination of being an urban community, a suburban community, as well as when you move into more up county areas where speeds are higher, we become a more rural area community. And that requires different types of um, enforcement, education, um, as we work with our communities to maintain traffic safety all throughout the county. That, again, that makes it not necessarily a one-stop shop or one program that we have. So again, I appreciate uh, the opportunity, Mr. Chair, for allowing me to speak this evening, and I am willing to answer any questions that anyone may have. Thank you very much, Chief. Uh, are there, before I recognize Mr. Ricks, Mr. McKinney, Mr. Gaster, Ms. Daphnis, are there any questions directed at Chief Jones and his comments? Christy Daphnis? Yeah, I'm just curious, um, Chief Jones, I know that the operating budget and other things for the county are coming up here. And I'm curious what your priorities are and how how you are kind of prioritizing this type of work in, in the budget. And if there's anything that we can do as a commission to help support that. Yes, I, again, I think that there's a, uh, there are issues that have been talked about tonight um, in the increase of speed cameras, which we've already um, have included in our recent um, speed camera program and red light camera program that's already included in that particular contract. Um, but what I do wanna do is continue to work collectively, not just individually as the police department, but to work with other um, agencies, particularly in our Vision Zero program with uh, Mr. Wade Holland being the director of that to work um, with the Department of Transportation on some road, um, some re-engineering in certain roadways. And this is why we're really working hard in some of the um, work that we're doing in our centralized traffic unit to come up with these new ideas of strategies of, of improvements um, to increase uh, safety on these roadways. And it may come down to that there may need to be some budgetary um, um, commitments that may need to be made in order to improve these roadways. But I think we collectively have to really look at that data and then come to um, come to uh, agreements across the board about what do we think are some of the best um, practices and some of the best options that we can have um, to not just, again, not to focus it on simple uh, police enforcement, because that's not always our goal. We want to be able to get our community to really abide by whether we need to lower speed limits, um, inc increase signage, whatever the case may be, or to change the uh, structure of our roadways to get them to understand, again, understanding that many of our roadways are turning in from necessarily a suburban roadway and now into more of an urban roadway with more pedestrians, more bikes that are now on our roadways. Um, and we need to really have a solid plan moving forward. And we are willing to work with the council as well as again, uh, the county executive in order to do that. Thank you, Chief Jones. Thank you, Commissioner Daphnis. Uh, any additional questions for Chief Jones? Chief, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Um, so, thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Ricks, then Mr. McKinney, then Dr. Gaster, and then uh, Commissioner Daphnis. Yeah, just, I'd just like to first say thank you, Chief, for coming on and uh, giving that update. Uh, one of my pet peeves, and this is across all uh, jurisdictions in Montgomery County, is that their law has been on the books for 99 million years, exaggeration, but uh, lights on when wipers are on. And, you know, any day that it rains, we've had some terrific storms here lately in, the, in these recent years. And when you see cars driving in storms where you can't even see out the window hardly and no lights on, and they put the sign, they light the signs up uh, like on 270, the big sign is saying lights on with wipers. So I'm just appealing to people 
that could help to cut down on the possibilities of uh, unnecessary uh, traffic incidents if you would follow that law of lights on with wipers. And uh, thank you for, for doing that. Thank you, Mr. Riggs. Vice Chair McKinney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you uh, for hosting uh, this forum. Uh, my initial observation is that we see how complex uh, the situation dealing with traffic is. It's not a one size fit all. And from what I heard from the general public today, they seem to be asking for a balance between law enforcement intervention in some cases and what the cameras are able to do in others, which just indicates to me how far we have to go to strike the right balance. Uh, where the public is going to be satisfied with what the police department is doing, as well as, uh, you know, what we can do without uh, actual uh, hands-on intervention by the police. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, uh, Commissioner Gaster for his report, because it certainly helped me in preparing uh, for this forum that we have and having read it, and uh, to get uh, a lot of the education regarding the data that's been collected regarding the traffic stops in this county. So it just tells me how far we have to go. And uh, I appreciate to all the uh, Montgomery County police officials that came on to aid us and answer questions as best they could regarding this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Vice Chair. Dr. Gaster. Yeah, I'd like to uh, second that last comment. It's uh, I'm really grateful that you all took took the time to come this evening and to to listen to people in the community. It, it's uh, it's really a good thing that you do this. Um, I guess I have a sort of slightly um, uh, well, just a different comment, which is look, there's a lot of data out there, and as somebody said, you can make the data, you can torture the data and make it make it tell you anything. Um, I guess what I would recommend to the police department is that it find some benchmark departments to use as comparisons. If you don't have comparisons for your data, you really don't know what you're doing. We do 100,000 traffic stops a year. Is that a good number? We don't know. I mean, we really don't know. We don't know because we don't have any comparisons. And, and there are good comparisons out there and not just Fairfax County and, and Prince George's County. You can build a set of comparisons with similar demographics and similar problems, and it will really help you to see what works and what doesn't. So that, that's my sort of additional comment from a data perspective. Go find some good comparisons. Thank you, Dr. Gaster. Commissioner Daphnis. Sure. Thank you so much. Um, just uh, wanted to note that, you know, in addition to being a commissioner here on the PAC, I'm also one of the co-founders of Montgomery County Families for Safe Streets. And we do a lot of um, advocacy work and, and give support to families of uh, people who've been killed in traffic uh, crashes, either pedestrians, cyclists, and sometimes also uh, those killed in, in vehicles. Um, it's very eye-opening, as um, as Chair Sterling noted. When things start happening around you and you become aware of them, it's shocking to see what the real numbers look like. And I think that a lot of people don't realize that. Um, I think while you can make data show whatever you want, there are a couple of undisputable undisputable facts. First, we know that data shows that automated enforcement does work. Speeding cameras, red light cameras, bus stop arm cameras, they work. Second, I think data also shows that at slower speeds across all modes of traffic, whether you're on foot or in a, on a cycle or in a car, less people are killed in a crash when the speed is lower. And in particular for pedestrians and cyclists, but for all modes. I think like the, the data that we've all discussed or you know that was in some of the reports uh, from OLO and, and on discrimination and bias, that's really important. But um, I think you know it's something we need to consider. 
I know over the past few years, there have been some suggestions to remove the traffic enforcement or some of the traffic enforcement from MCPD and move it over to parts of uh, to MCDOT. I think that is an issue that would require really intense conversation and has several pros and cons and many different considerations to think through. Um, but putting that aside for a moment, um, as Chief Jones mentioned, there's a lot of non-enforcement work that needs to continue to happen through Vision Zero and through Montgomery County Department of Transportation. And that's really interagency work. And the more that we can, um, the more that we can kind of prompt or nudge MCPD and MCDOT and the County Executive's Office to work together and to work together with our state legislators and, um, and the State Highway Administration, I think that's the only way that we're going to really make progress here. Um, and then one last point that I'll make, one of the things that underlies uh, some of what we heard tonight is that we have technology. And from my perspective as a commissioner, I think we need to go full stop in encouraging that we use it. Um, I would be fully in support of expanding automated enforcement um, specifically for, for speeding and for red lights. I think that there are ways to minimize, um, minimize impact on vulnerable communities. Um, as I sort of had mentioned to some of you previously, there are ways to think about sliding scale fees and, uh, and it would require some changes to the law, but you can get around some of the um, potential uh, disparate impacts, um, but really improve uh, some of the uh, some of the data on the other side of the coin um, in reducing some of those uh, potential pretextual interactions and and other engagements. So that's that's all that I would have to add. So thank you. Thank, thank you, Commissioner Captain. I'd, I'd like to ask if you. I, I want to hear what you have to say. We all do. I'd like to recognize the the other commissioner, Lori Ekstrand. And then we'll come back to you and we'll, I think that you're, you're going to be speaking, I'm going to take the assumption that you'll be responding to a number of comments and we want to hear sort of your concluding remarks, if, if you don't mind, I'm going to ask uh, Commissioner Ekstrand to, to, to go ahead uh, to accompany the other commissioners, if that's okay with you, sir. Yes, sir, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you, Captain. Commissioner Ekstrand. Thank you very much. I, I really like to thank everyone who spoke. I think that I learned a lot and um, there's lots to learn. Uh, I really uh, want to speak in favor of far more analytics in relation to how we think through these uh, issues and how we assess what's working and what's not working. Uh, you know, it's unfortunate that some of the simple analysis uh, can be very misleading. Um, we really have to have a much more thoughtful approach uh, to analyzing the data. And we need to collect the data that's going to help us analyze the data so that we can figure out what's working and what's not working. Um, you know, I don't know what's working and not working or and not working, uh, but I think that it's important that we uh, take those steps, so that we know the answers. We have only limited resources to put into traffic enforcement or any other kinds of uh, police safety uh, issues. And we need to make every cent of that money count. Uh, and hopefully the way we can do it is to have more um, thoughtful and sophisticated analysis of the information so that we can uh, make the soundest decisions possible. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Exton. Captain Dillman, you're recognized. Chairman Sterling, thank you for giving me the opportunity. I think I'd be remiss as the director of our traffic operation division if I just didn't make a few comments. No, we're happy to have your comments. I, I appreciate everyone's effort on this commission. I appreciate everyone that came on and, and gave their comments and and just like to uh, remark on what's already been said to some degree. We've, we've heard comments on both ends of the spectrum today. And what I can tell you is traffic safety, which we as a police agency take as the utmost importance, especially in light of the fact of the, the deadly years that we've had the last couple of years. Um, it's it's going to take a holistic approach on traffic. Um, there is so much in this report about moving to automated traffic enforcement, 
But I just want it to be the data speaks for itself in the sense, and I know Christy is a mm -hmm. huge proponent of it. Um, the data and the factors that contribute to fatal accidents are speed, distracted driving, impaired driving, occupant safety. That being said, our automated traffic enforcement, it deals with one component of all that, and that's speed. It's not going to stop distracted driving. It's not going to stop impaired driving. It's not going to stop occupant safety. All behaviors that we need to work on curving. And that's going to take the efforts of traffic enforcement. Um, I keep hearing, and what's important, and when we talk about data, is, is factual data. We keep hearing about how Montgomery County Police have 100,000 traffic contacts with uh, people a year, which makes it a high volume interaction between the public and the police. I can tell you 2019 was the last time we had numbers anywhere close to that. Last year, we had under 36,000 traffic contacts. So that's a significant decrease. And I think we would be remiss if we didn't say there's not a correlation with a lower level of enforcement with traffic by the police and the fatal collisions that we're seeing. So I think it's important that, that we all have a stake in this. We all have a portion of this to own and, and we need to collaborate together and, and come up with um, options that are going to be the most beneficial for the residents of Montgomery County. Um, impaired driving is a huge problem. It's gonna to continue to be a problem. And with the change in the marijuana laws, we are going to have a major problem with impaired driving next year. Mark my word. Um, so, so there's a whole lot that goes into this. I'll just give you an example about the issue we have with impaired driving. In an eight-week period of time, from November 9th to the end of the year, our holiday task force uh, arrested 291 people for driving under the influence. Now, that was 40 officers that took place in that enforcement effort over the course of eight weeks. That wasn't 40 officers a night. That was 40 officers total. So it just shows you that the importance of officers being out there making these traffic stops to make the streets of Montgomery County safer. Um, and we can't do that without the police enforcement efforts and that police contact. So that that's... That's basically what I wanted to say. I appreciate everyone's time and effort, but just know that this is this is a priority of Chief Jones as well as myself as the director of, of the Montgomery County Traffic Operation Division to try to minimize the number of deaths on our road. And it's going to take a number of different enforcement efforts, not just automated traffic enforcement. Captain Dillman, before I recognize uh, commissioners for some additional comments, I'd just like to say that as I reflect on what we've heard over the last hour and a half, is a public that values traffic enforcement. Mm -hmm. And I hope that you and the other officers present and, and the men and women you work with appreciate that that's the consensus of what, what we're hearing tonight. That certainly there are and, and well-deserved statistical reasons for concern about how discretionary enforcement takes place. But as far as traffic enforcement goes, the public wants it and it values it. And it values the men and women who do it. And when I hear that in the course of enforcement, five cruisers were struck you know, we're very, we recognize how dangerous this work is and we appreciate the men and women who do it. Um, so uh, I'd like to recognize then again, uh, Commissioner Gassner, Commissioner Daphnis and Commissioner Ekstrand, did you seek to have oh, the no. comments? No, okay. Commissioner um, Gassner? Yeah, just to, just two, two, one quick comment and one quick question. Um, I don't think anybody uh, who support, and if our report suggests that we don't want traffic enforcement, then we've written it badly. Uh, I've written it badly. Um, that's not true. I think the point is that we want, uh, I, I think we wanted to make sure that the police department is focusing on the most important uh, traffic enforcement, that is preventing injury and death. And, um, the evidence we found found that 
that was mixed. They, we're very happy to see the central motors unit. We're very happy to see data-driven policing. We found holes in different places that seem to indicate that resources could be reallocated effectively. So, so that's point one. And point two, I'm, I'm uh, fascinated to hear that um, stops have fallen by two thirds. Can you give us a little bit more of an explanation of what's going on? I think there's a number of things going on. I think we we ran into the the post George Floyd as well as the pandemic issues. Uh, a lot of a lot of public scrutiny uh, uh, against the police. We had a lot of uh, time where we didn't interact with the public as much because of the pandemic. And as Chief Jones uh, uh, illustrated, we are about 127 sworn police officers down. That's that's a significant number down. And our calls for service uh, last year, uh, so in 2021, we had 187,621 calls for service dispatched to our police officers. In 2022, we had 193,305. So we continue to have calls for service. We have a continued amount of, of officers who, who um, or a diminished amount of police force. So our enforcement efforts have significantly uh, decreased as, as a result of a number of factors. Um, so uh, that, that's why you see a lot of those numbers uh, coming down. Uh, when, when crime is rising or calls for service are rising, depleted workforce, um, and, and you have and you have to understand too, part of the central traffic uh, and losing some position in the police department, we went from having uh, motor officers in each of our six districts that I think we had 48 officers devoted to traffic enforcement. We're now down to 26 as a central traffic unit. Mm -hmm. So we have more people or less people devoted to specifically doing uh, centralized traffic enforcement. Thank you, Captain. Commissioner sure. Daphnis? Um, yeah, I just wanted to note that, you know, one of the reasons, aside from, you know, reducing any bias, to move more towards automated enforcement is that it is a way to better focus the human resources that you have. And the one, uh, the, the thing I would, I would note is that, you know, you, you're talk, you talked about the success of the, of the drunk driving or impaired driving task force. I think the interesting thing about that is that those have been shown to be very effective at the national level. And, and some things that people don't necessarily know is that that's not just a Montgomery County thing. There's actually a, a nationwide campaign that leads up to most of these sort of task force, um, you know, kind of operations. I think by pairing some of your special enforcement, um, your special enforcement details or, or task force type scenarios with some of that education in that holistic way and increasing automated enforcement, you can both use the human resources that you have in a better way and actually start to change behavior because they have shown that that those, you know, DUI checkpoints or, you know, task force type models when paired with, an, in, with education is super effective. Thank you, Commissioner Daphnis. Um, I think that uh, we've had a, a, a rich and instructive evening. I wanted to note that uh, the staff and or a number of the, our council members were present, council member uh, Friedson, uh, Balcom, Jawando, Gonzalez, all had staff who uh, were present and, and, and listening were very grateful for the for their attention. Um, we are extremely grateful for our staff uh, this evening, uh, Nazifa Hussein and Logan Ainbinder, who've been uh, working with, of course, our council, Susan Farage, and um, Equin Wynn from the county IT office, who has been behind the scenes making sure that this went as smoothly as it has. We're grateful to, to all of you and to the to the members of the public who took the time to come and, and those who have submitted statements uh, but didn't choose to speak, we value those. We're going to be uh, continuing to take up this issue in future meetings. We're going to be um, uh, updating the report that Dr. Gaster 
uh, prepared that we adopted last December. Um, and we, we have new commissioners with, with keen uh, expertise and insight. And so we're, we're looking forward to do that. Um, to all of the uh, police officers and, and, and others who, who joined us this evening, it is with great, with deep gratitude that we appreciate your, your coming and sharing with us. Um, uh, Mr. Ricks. Yeah, very quickly, uh, Captain uh, Dillman, uh, when you spoke of the task force and how many people were arrested for DUI and what have you, that did not include what the other officers uh, also made arrests outside of that, right? And yeah. the part is when uh, a, when a officer has to go to court, that pulls more people off the street, right? So uh, it just, it's a dangling effect. Yeah, it and, and thank you, uh, Mr. Ricks. It, it, it does, it depends on their hours. Uh, some of our officers, obviously, if they're working evening or nighttime shifts, they are tasked with going to court during the daytime hours, so it doesn't impact them. But if they work a day work shift and they're in court, it absolutely does. If there are, are there other commissioners who seek recognition, is there a motion to adjourn? We'll move. And I think it was a great uh, session. Thank you, Mr. Riggs. Is there a second? A second. All those in favor say aye. 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 We're adjourned. Aye. Thank you, everyone. We'll meet again next month. Thank you all. Good night. Be well. Be safe.